Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a cool unboxing episode. I've got four guitars for you with a couple of accessories, but let's start things off with this guy right here. I had this guitar a couple of years ago, and it's kind of funny how this one kind of played hopscotch between a few different buyers after it was sold for me, because this was one of those guitars where, hey, you know, sometimes if I sell a guitar and somebody comes to me afterwards and asks, hey, can you ask that guy if he'll be willing to sell it to me or whatnot? Usually how I handle those situations is I just forward the person who purchased the guitar for me the information of the new potential buyer. That way it's not like I'm handing out people's information that may or may not want to be got contacted, but this was one of those stories that was a success for both the people. However, it came back to me in a different case. He didn't feel safe enough sending it in the original Gibson case, so he sent it separately and in one of these TKL cases. Went all out with one of the Aeris packaging systems. I mean, this is a very special guitar. I don't blame this guy for going so gung-ho on our pack job, because just wait until you see what is visiting me again. Oh yeah, it's this guitar. This was one of those guitars, I didn't necessarily regret selling it right away, but as the years have passed, the more and more I realize just how special this 59 reissue is. Okay, so this was one of the NAM show display pieces for 2019. It is such a huge year for Gibson in hindsight. I mean, we knew it back in 2019 that it was a big year for these guys, but this was just a particularly massive, crazy monster top. Check out the full review and demo if you want to know the whole story on this one, but everybody was oogling and googling over this one at the NAM show. So even though it's only like three years old at this point, it's just such a beautiful example. I mean, people are paying crazy money for this one simply because it was a NAM show piece. I mean, there are collectors out there that only have NAM show pieces in their collection. Now, it's been through a couple of hands since the last time I've had it. I noticed the NAM show sticker is no longer on it, which I think is a complete flop of a fail, but the people who were buying this just loved it for its explosive top and the awesome factory burst finish. And I can't say I blame somebody for taking the pick guard off, but I will definitely be putting that thing back on. But what a lovely piece right here. Let's go ahead and check out the case. Yep, it still has its original lift in one. It looks about the same to me so far. But with any luck, our COA and everything should be in here. Guess we'll have to go back to the video to see if that September 18 tag is showing. Yes, it is. So that's how we can know it's the original. But it's the historically correct one. One neck rest, not the double, not the most protective. It's once again why he decided to ship with this aftermarket one. And yeah, we've got all the good stuff in here, including our medallion, our 60th anniversary COA. And here's where they decided to put that NAMM show sticker. I'm probably going to put it back on the guitar, though, because it's just so cool. Looks like our tone sticker for our pick guards right here as well. And of course, our pick guard. So let's go ahead and get this thing fixed. Perfect. I don't know, guys. I think this looks infinitely better with the pick guard. I get it. We're covering over some of the craziness, but at the same time, it kind of helps break up the monotony of the insanity. It kind of helps pop it and bring it back. And I just love that medallion on the back and the little goofy sticker. It's not very sticky anymore, but hey, it's there. Restoring it back to here, now I'm starting to think, mm, yeah, I, I might have to keep this one. That's definitely not a guitar that I mind having back. It's great, it's historical, it's something I'll probably regret if I sell again. But hey, speaking of which, if you are interested in anything I'm selling, I've got a really cool idea for the Halloween episode this year, but it's kind of expensive. So I mean, if you've been thinking about something and you want to help make a really cool Halloween episode happen, feel free to uh, chat me up here. But inside here, I have a guitar I ordered like a year and a half ago and, you know, between A and B, I, I, I just don't want to review this guitar anymore because we've done so many other ones of the style. Now, granted, mainly through the demo shop, like Big Red, so that means we've got some sort of a 335 in here. But what kind, you might ask? It is a figured ES-335. Now, when I first made this order, I had asked for a natural one, but it was taking so long. They're like, hey, we got this tobacco sunburst one if you'd rather not wait. So after a year and a half, it's like, all right, just just get me a guitar. 
So that's kind of the story on this model. It's one of the newer 335 figures. However, I'd kind of forgotten these guys have the small block inlay. So I think they consider that, what, a 64 reissue, something like that. So maybe I should have did a full review and demo. However, I mean, this is nice, but I mean, it's not the one I want to document, I don't think. That's what happens when you order blind on pre-orders waiting for other stuff. I will say the back is quite phenomenal, though. This one's got a little bit of like a mineral streak right there and like some sort of a deposit here. A little bit of bird's eye even. I'll let you guys in on a secret. I, I had ordered this and a 345 at the exact same time. So I will go ahead and document the 345 because I don't think I've ever touched one of those on the show. But this one, I think I'm just going to uh, set it up on my website. I can hook you up with this one without having to wait a year and a half. But just the general first impressions of this, that neck actually pretty chunky for one of these i was expecting that to be very slim i mean that's a very nice rounded neck profile right here i mean it's a little bit slimmer here but i would definitely categorize this more so closer to that 50s neck but if you're wondering why is it taking so long for natural apparently gibson is having issues with the natural finish <laughs> so i guess i do still want to review one of these i'm just gonna wait until the natural from an investment standpoint it's like you, you've had my money for a year and a half i might as well get something and wait i know i like to have the illusion that my cash coffers are infinite on this show but I'm human like the rest of you guys, right? So right in here is a little kind of funny, funny thing I thought I should buy because it kind of ties into an episode we did a couple of weeks ago. So you guys saw the really cool Les Paul USB. Now see the lamest one you could ever imagine. It's just a regular thumb drive with a, a, a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Les Paul. This one's lame. And that's why I didn't buy it at first, but then after all those other ones, everybody's like, hey, those are kind of cool as a display piece in your future museum. So I was like, okay, I I'll buy the lame one too. So we'll just take a quick look around this. Now, unfortunately, I think this got damaged in shipping because the seller of this one, he has like more than one. I thought he only had one, but this one has like some damaged packaging right there where it got smashed in transit. And, you know, I'm kind of keeping that as a collector's item maybe i'll see if he has a different one that he can send me but yeah there you go a whole whopping 512 megabits <laughs> Next up on our show tonight, I have a new Guitar Day purchase that we had already done a review and demo on, but he's like, hey, can you help me anyways? Just because I made a video on it doesn't mean that I can't help you get it already. If you really want it on the show, like this guy did, I can just unbox it with the other stuff. It's not a problem. Sometimes it can be fun to check out multiple versions of the same guitar because sometimes you find weird factory errors. So technically, I haven't actually unboxed this guitar <laughs> the way it's supposed to be yet because my last one had one of those factory errors but let us go ahead and see what is inside of this black les paul custom case well you could describe it very similar to the case it's a black les paul custom but it's another one of them peter frampton models but hey we've got the correct poker chip on this one unlike our last one that had black but man that just Pops it, makes it look completely different, but we've got our Peter Frampton one. It's also one of the brand new 2022 iterations. This model existed in 2021, right? That's when they had reintroduced it, but they also make them in 2022 and probably still continuing on from there. But the 2022s get your special little medallion back here. Kind of similar to the 70th anniversary R9 we were just looking at, except for this time it's celebrating the 70th anniversary of all Les Paul models. Because you got 1952 with your gold tops over here, and then current day production, 2022 with what they're making now. So you can check out this review and demo if you need to learn more about these, but essentially what makes these things cool is the fact that they've got the mahogany top, they've got the three humbuckers here, and you've got the Frampton wiring. So I was shopping around a few different dealers for this one. However, these things are always VOS jobs, right? So you just expect them to be like this. That's what I was telling you guys in the video. However, I mean, it almost looks like there might be a touch up on this one right there. I'm going to have to blacklight that just to make sure. Well, it doesn't blacklight like a touch up, but man, that's a really weird like paint splotch area. And now I'm noticing all this splotchiness on the fretboard. Like, I, I don't know what all that's about. So unfortunately, uh, this guy's gonna have to wait like another week because I'm, I'm gonna send this one back. 
<laughs> That's the thing about new guitar day purchases. I, I want to make sure they get good guitars, right? They're supporting my show, buying through me. I mean, this is a fantastic guitar, but that's not what you should be spending brand new prices on. So I guess we'll see another one of these in like an unboxing episode or two. We will be packing this one up shortly after our last unboxing here. Speaking of that last unboxing, let's go ahead and get this done here. This is something that I had purchased from Chicago Music Exchange. Sometimes they get some pretty good stuff on the used market. So I used to deal with Chicago Music Exchange quite a bit in the early days of my buying and selling. Like, if I ever got too many guitars, I know I could hit up Daniel and be like, hey, you wanna buy all these guitars? And generally, Chicago Music Exchange pays pretty well. I don't know if that's changed since I last dealt with them, but if you're looking to just like wholesale out a guitar, you know, real quick. I mean, they usually pay pretty decently. Well, depending on who you talk to anyways. <laughs> Inside here, what do we have? It's another one of these bad boys. And by a bad boy, I'm talking about this guy, the Telepaul. So this is not the same one I documented. I documented number one, and I shipped that one out of the state, so you won't be able to find that one in the USA anytime soon. But right here is number three. And you're gonna notice it says out of five, but still to this day, I have yet to see four or five ever show up. So they were probably sold through the Gibson garage would be my best bet, but I honestly have no idea. But they're kind of cool. This was a very popular model, and it was strange. I had purchased this guitar, and then the day after it was delivered, somebody messaged me going, I need one of those telepaws. How do I find one? Because the search term just doesn't pull anything up. And it was at that point where I was like, you know, Gibson didn't really give these a good name. I called it Telepaul because I, I call it the way it is, but they can't say Tele because then they'll get in trouble. So I tried to delay this as long as I could, but as I told you, I got other things I need to move on. So I mean, if somebody else wants to buy this, it is available with all your cool single coil Telecaster goodness stuff in here. I just really like the motif that they did here on the side. Even if you don't care too much about this stuff, you could return it back to humbuckers and then just have a cool motif on your Black Les Paul Custom. So who knows, maybe I'll track down number two and then I can say I owned all the publicly known ones at one point in time. All right, troglodytes, that's enough unboxing, but I do have a couple of boxing stories for you. First to pack up here is the Adam Jones Les Paul Standard. Obviously, selling it at retail price, this did not last too long on my website, but I was pleasantly surprised with how Gibson USA treated the Les Paul Adam Jones Standard. So you can check out the review and demo if you need to learn more, but that bridge pickup is screaming. Next up in our packing journey is what I probably shouldn't have sold. Everybody seemed to love this video. I loved this guitar. It was so crazy. So we had a volume kill switch, a tone kill switch, a burst driver circuit for built-in overdrive, master volume, master tone, one P90. This was just such a fantastic guitar. So if you missed this great episode, I would suggest checking it out right here. But the whole back end story of this is I decided to put it on my website at a price that I would be comfortable letting it go for, and it sold within four minutes. So needless to say, very highly desirable guitar here. So let's get it to its new owner. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.